Hello, it's Dane at Jonah Custom Guitars. And this video basically has one intent, and that is to just clarify something that a colleague uh, and I are bantering back and forth on. And uh, so this is, um, the question is, or the concern is, all right, if you have a string lay, and I'm just using the big E string, even though this is on the treble side, Say your string is laying, this is exaggerated, but in from the edge of the fretboard on the high side, right, as you're resetting the neck, I should clarify that, that we're talking about a neck reset, and this is just one aspect of it. You've got, you've got up and down as far as the string action, this way, up and down. That isn't the issue we're discussing. Then you've got twist in the neck this way or that way that is not the issue we're discussing okay you have three things you have to follow as you're setting the neck and uh, there's a specific order in that and the, my colleague has that order down he's not having an issue with that the question is if you've got a string lay here and then you've got a string lay over here that's this way so you need to move the end of the fretboard You've got a pivot point here. You need to move the end of the fretboard in, in this direction, right? It needs to go that way. The way to do that, and he's correct in this assumption, is if I can move this around and see where I'm going, is that you have to take material out of the treble side of this joint. Now, we are making an assumption that the string action height, the angle of the neck for string action height is correct so that this entire length of this joint, try to keep my fingers out of what I'm explaining, the entire length of this joint would have to be, would have to have some material removed from it in order to drop this part, this edge of the fretboard. Drop's not the right word, to move it away from the treble side toward the bass side, right? We're going to swing it. Now, I kind of have a mock-up to explain, try to help explain this. And it's certainly not the best mock-up, but it's what I could come up with in a pinch. So I'm going to move this guitar over. This guitar, by the way, is the Washburn that you've been seeing in series and it's it's doing its cure time so it's laying here taking up space because I didn't bother trying to find a place to hang it in my mess here. So clear space. So this is the and I can see it. Let's get down here. This is this is the guitar body and of course this is the the mortise. This is the end of the neck, and this is the dovetail. Now, some of this um, this example is going to be slightly skewed because my dovetail is not really uh, equal from side to side. But if this is where it's at, and you notice I cut myself a little bit of gap in here. Okay, so we want to move. We want to move the fretboard this part of the fretboard we want to come toward the base side of the guitar with it. So what that means is that we have to take material off of this face or cheek of the the heel. And we are looking, this is a plan view of this now. And it is a two-dimensional and we're dealing with three-dimensional stuff here. So obviously we're going to this is, I'm going to exaggerate this a lot right now, right? So it's, it's got to, you got to remove material from here so that this neck can swing that way. It's pivoting. Now, as it goes down, if you had a perfect fitting, you had a perfect fitting joint here, as this neck 
swings down. I, I was going to use quarter inch plywood. It would have made would have been easier to use, but you can see, and I am going to exaggerate it. You can see it opens this this side of the joint up. So this side of the joint, once you reach your destination with swinging the fretboard over to where you want it, then this side of this dovetail will have to be um, shimmed. This side of the dovetail may just let you swing this down and, and not do anything to you. Or you may have to take a little bit off of this because what could happen is that as you swing this down, and we're only talking, I mean this is a very, very, very small amount of movement to get what you need to get for that pivot. Uh, if you swing this down, it is possible that this, if you don't trim any material on this corner, it could shift your neck off center, and I'm there again, I'm going to exaggerate this, so you could shift your neck off center and then you would have a problem covering the existing, um, I keep putting my finger over on the guitar that's not on the screen, but if you have an existing footprint where where your uh, fretboard extension was resting, if you start shoving it over because of this, the tip of this dovetail pushing you that way, then you would, would be off center here in the face of the guitar where the heel covered the you know where the heel was before if it's getting shifted over a little bit you might end up not covering that I've talked about this in other videos but if if I'm you know if I'm doing a reset and I end up with uh, I end up with the right string lay right regardless of how I get there I might have to throw this off a little bit to get the right string lay um, chances are you won't have to. You'll just be able to pivot. But if it throws you off and you want to capture that and bring it back, then you would be trimming material off the long point of the dovetail. And then you would be adding material over here to compensate for the amount that it's dropped into the guitar to, to make up for that difference. Okay, hopefully that didn't just make it harder to understand. But uh, that's that's the idea. And again, just a reminder for those of you who have no idea what the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Those of you who are coming into this in the middle of discussion, um, this is, we're only looking at this from a two dimensional standpoint. At this, we just want to turn the neck. Everything else is fitting good. We just need to turn the neck. So that's, that's the answer. Um, at least as clearly as I could, I could explain it. Um, so I hope that'll help.